Hey guys, listen, before we get started with the following homebrew video, I needed to take this opportunity to do something very important, and that is to thank Manda. She's known as Mandarin 1980 in my Friday night chat room on my live broadcast. And she's the one who sent in the following beer kit, which we're about to brew. It's a Sierra Nevada Torpedo um, Extra IPA beer kit clone. That's a mouthful, isn't it? So she sent this in a little while ago and um, we unboxed it and you might have watched that video, but now we're gonna brew it. Now, you'll, you, the reason you'll notice why I didn't mention this in the video itself is because I had done three takes of the intro to the video and sometimes when you do multiple takes you forget what you've said and what you hadn't haven't said so that's kind of where I messed up so that's why I made this short intro so Amanda thank you so much I really appreciate it you're a great gal and I can't wait to have a torpedo with you during my live broadcast okay thank you now Let's get brewing. Hey guys, it's Craig here. Welcome back. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Um, today, <laughs> we're gonna brew a beer, um, finally. And uh, I have been sent a beer, and I also have a beer I wanna taste, too. Uh, it's in the fridge upstairs. Somebody sent me a, uh, a beer that we're going to taste, which is why I'm drinking this really crappy store-bought beer at the moment, because this will cleanse my palate. This will neutralize my palate, because really that's all these are good for, because there's no flavor, right? So. All right, here we go. <laughs> Cheers. Anything you drink after one of these is going to taste great. All right. So, what do we have here? And I do not want to spill that. Put it over there. What do we have here? I'm not sure you can, if you can see all of this. Um, what we've got here, I've written it down. We have 12 pounds of pale liquid malt right here. Right there. Okay, pale liquid malt extract, 12 pounds. Eight, uh, eight pounds. Did I say 12? Eight. Eight pounds. Okay, we have... A bunch of hops here and what is in this is three ounces of magnum um, two ounces of crystal and one ounce of citra and these get added at various times throughout the boil which is what makes it a, you know a double IPA with a ton of late edition hops which gives it that wonderful hop hoppy flavor um, if you've never tried an IPA or a double IPA, you don't know what hops are. Because, I mean, all beer has hops in it, but you, you, you rarely, you know, it's not, you don't always taste them. So, um, what else is here? Oh, we've got the steeping grains. And um, it's just a, it's a, they're already ground up in a bag. And in here we have eight ounces of carafoam, eight ounces of crystal 10, eight ounces of crystal 40. Okay, so there, I wrote it down. There's my really fancy handwriting or printing. So you take a snapshot of that. If you want to brew this beer, that's your ingredients right there. I can even put it down below if you want, All right? And I'm going to use some yeast that I uh, have been recycling for almost two years now. Okay, I believe this is a, um, a um, it's an ale yeast or an IPA yeast or, well, just an ale yeast. And I think it's a California ale. I'm not sure, but it was a um, Y yeast. I bought was it Y yeast? Anyway, it was a liquid yeast that came in a beer kit a couple years ago, and I've just been recycling it over and over. And tastes great. It's great yeast. It's 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 a Craig tube yeast now because it's adapted to all my abuse. So it's all used to me now. So this is what we're using. We've got our pot, and I'm going to fill it up with water and uh, get started. The instructions are in the top here, so I'll, I'll get those out and I'll get things rolling here for you, okay? So I'll be, I'll be back in a second. Get yourself a beer and let's sit back and enjoy brewing some really nice double IPA, Torpedo. Cheers. Torpedo's away. Okay, 
All right, so the first thing we're gonna, we have to do, I've got two and a half gallons of hot water in here, and I'm gonna heat this water on my induction burner until it comes to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so that's what we're gonna do there. After it's at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to put in these uh, these uh, these steeping grains. Now, this kit came with them already gra uh, ground and already in a bag. And I think that's an option when you're ordering these kits. Um, if you're, you want to if you want to crush them yourself and put it in your own bag, or if you want them to do it ahead of time for you. And Amanda, I think if, th if this was an option, I, she kindly chose to have them ground ahead of time so I didn't have to do it. So um, this is gonna take a little while. And a lot of this just ha is a lot of waiting. So um, I got my thermometer in there. I'll just keep an eye on that when it gets to 150. We put these in, turn off the heat, and they steep for 20 minutes, okay? And then, when while these are steeping, I'm gonna get that beer from upstairs in the fridge um, and do a little review. The beer came from 27 Brewing is his name, and it's a chocolate mint stout. <sighs> I think you just probably might have watched my last video, which was a live beer tasting of his um, pumpkin beer, and it was delicious. So um, this is another one of his beers, and I'm going to talk about it and drink some of it while we're waiting for these to steep. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute. All right, we've reached about 153 degrees in here, so we're going to put in our hop bag. I mean grain bag. And then we're going to try this beer. So here we go. All the... Uh, uh, there's no, you're not going to have a... a traditional Craig 2 brewing video without that happening. Okay? It's just the way it is. All right. Mm. Smells good. Let's get these in there. Lots of room for them to float around. See the knots way up here. That's the way they did it. And I've already made a heck of a mess here. I haven't done anything yet. But, um, whoops. All right. So, I'll put the lid on that. And I'll wait 20 minutes. Alexa, set alarm for 20 minutes. Couldn't even hear her, she's way over there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to try this beer. This is a um, well, let me get this thing out here so that we can read exactly the note that he wrote. This is a chocolate mint DOS. DOS? What, no windows yet? Um, in, it's, in brackets it says a double oatmeal stout. Alright, so that's what's, what it is. His pumpkin beer was really so good. It was just amazing. So, all right, I need a opener. Sorry, I'm not prepared. I haven't done one of these videos in a while. Here it is right here. Okay. And I just washed out, rinsed out that glass. A little hiss there. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Look at that. Let's just bring it up to there. There's a little left in there. Well, it's certainly dark. Very dark. Let's get these off. I'm gonna give it a smell. Wow, chocolate vanilla. It's 
smells like a cookie. It smells like an oatmeal cookie. Um, you know, a nice one. With chocolate chips. It's beautiful. Let's get to it. Thank you, 27 Brewer. Let me make sure I got his name right, because I've been known. 27 Brewing. 27 Brewing. Brewer, Brewing. Cheers. Felt like doing it off camera. Oh man, that's really nice. That is that is delicious. Um, it, chocolate, you know, it's almost like he took baker, not baker's chocolate, little chocolate chips, threw them in there. It's a beer. It's not a chocolate milkshake. It's not a. Um, cookie. It's not a chocolate cake or a brownie. It's a very nice beer, a stout, with hints, not hints, more than hints, but notes, as they, the terminology, I guess, is notes of chocolate, probably some vanilla, I don't know, maybe that's just part of the chocolate profile. Um, the oatmeal thing, well, I guess that's part of the grain bill. I don't know exactly how you incorporate oatmeal into beer because I've never done it. Nicely carbonated, just perfectly carbonated, really. Extremely enjoyable. It's not as bold as the Pumpkinator beer that I did before. Um, that was definitely a outspoken beer, which is which wasn't bad. It was absolutely delicious. It was like eating pumpkin pie. Um, but it's so, it doesn't scream at you anything. It just, it's a, it's a chocolate mint stout. The mint, I'm, I'm not getting as of yet. Let me see if I can get that out of here. You wouldn't want too much mint in a beer anyway. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. I was shopping the other day, grocery shopping, and I saw... These like Oreo type cookies with mint filling in the middle instead of the white stuff. And I almost bought, them. I almost bought them, but you know, I'm trying to <clears throat> watch my stomach. So I didn't buy them. But if you think of the green filling inside those cookies or those after eight candies while you're sipping this beer, yes, you can definitely taste the, uh, the mint. It's not like a menthol kind of mint. It's just got that green, minty kind of hint to it. The hint of mint. That's the way I would describe it. <clears throat> Excuse me. What are you going to do? It's beer. Cheers. One more. Fellas, or fella, this is great beer. Um... Again, some of the beers that are being produced in people's homes. It's amazing. It is really. Um, I mean, this doesn't, you know, I, I'm not making beer like this on a regular basis. I'm just doing the Coopers, which are fine. It, you know, it turns out better than the store-bought one that I drank earlier. Much better. But this is craft beer. This is craft beer. And I'm giving him some time. Um on this video because he sent them to me and it costs money to do that and it's a pain in the butt and everything. So, you know, I gotta make sure that 27 Brewing gets some, some credit here. Same with SD Brewer and uh, Zeech, uh, Big Zeech, Big Zatch, who sent me beers as well, who did those reviews um, already. I think I did two of them, I think, I hope I did. Yes, I did, because I did one live and I did one on the other day. So, um, or the other week and I made mistakes, I had to put, things on the screen. But beautiful, beautiful. This is going to be a nice companion while I brew this this beer. So what I'm going to do now is pause the video. This will warm up. Uh, the glass is a wonderful glass that came from a, uh, a, an old friend who used to call himself, he used to call himself Scattero TV. But he sent me this glass years ago and it's one of the, it's one of the ones I haven't broken yet. <laughs> so 
beautiful glass, beautiful beer. All right. I'll, uh, I'll come back to you when we're ready to go to the next step. What I'm going to do is uh, remove the grains when the 20 minutes is up and then turn the heat on and start bringing this up to a boil. In the meantime, while that's happening, I'm going to take these uh, liquid malt extract jars and I'm going to put them under hot water so that they can get heated up. And then when the water comes to a boil, we'll pour these in with the heat turned off. And then we'll start adding our hops, which I've previously measured. Don't spill that. <clears throat> I've got three of them here. I don't know if you can see there's two here. Two there and a third one here. All right. I'll tell you what they are once we get putting them in. And we've got more over here that are still packaged. Those are for dry hopping. So this there, there's probably going to be some beer with these hops. Torpedoes are awesome and they help you sleep. You know what the smell of this stuff? The smell. It's like catnip. It's beautiful. And then when you smell this one, this is a different one. This is the this is the um, citra. The different smells all together. These ones here. Grapefruit, grapefruit, you know, you got to smell these things. You, you know, if you're brewing beer and you're using, you got to smell them. Put this in a pillow and go to sleep. What an odor that is. Just a beautiful, even though they're dry hops, there's still a beautiful, beautiful aroma on these things. And that goes over and translates into the, into the beer. I can't wait to drink this beer. We're going to give it all the time in the world it needs to brew properly. We've got the instructions. I'm following the instructions to the, to the letter that came from the company, whoever they are. I just can't read that, but there's the little logo there. I hope it's focusing. And um, I'm following their instructions exactly. I have a food scale and everything, so we're measuring things out. And we're doing this. Okay? So, I'll uh, come back to you when uh, this is ready to move on. All right? Thank you for watching. So, hope I'm not slurring by the end of this <clears throat> video. Was it 7.30 in the morning? I'm getting a telemarketer call. If I was up there beside near the phone because i won't i won't make it there in time i would and i would answer it and i would f with them the hell with them i'm sick of them calling me you know for in, in strange hours so i would call them up and i would screw with them i'd love to do that sorry i'm not a mean guy but okay 20 minutes is up oh i guess what i often do is uh um, I used to do it anyway. I haven't done it since I've been here, but just grab it. It's a little hot. And you just pull it out. It says, don't squeeze them. Don't squeeze the Charmin. Don't squeeze the hops. Yeah, that's hot. Just uh, let them drain. And I used to hook them over. I don't know if this is going to work. I think it should. I used to hook them over this thing here. Like that. And then just hold on to it and let it just let it drain for a few minutes. Right. I think we're good. At the point of zero returns. Right. Okay. Now what? Well, we uh, bring this to a boil. Put the lid on here. Keep an eye on it. And I will be back again when that occurs. Okay, so now that i um, got to tape off these things here, because they, they tape them up pretty good, because if they spill or leak, it's a big mess. Um, and I've turned off the uh, burner, because um, it came to a boil, so I'm going to uh, add them, these things. And it's important to turn off the, the heat when you do this, otherwise they can burn. So, um, and then once I'm done adding, because this can take a while, so I'll probably speed this up or whatever. Once I'm done adding these, I'll rinse them with some water, put them, that in there so that you know, we get all of it out because it's very sticky stuff. All right, so let's go that one in there. And I will get these rinsed out. Oh, it went in. <laughs> 
the spoon fell right into the have to deal with that. I will rinse out these containers, add that, and then I have to bring this back to a boil. And then we're going to start adding our hops. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, we got we got a boil. It's difficult here. I can barely get a boil, but I got one. So I'm going to add. I, I've decided not to use this because I haven't. I'm. I just don't want to deal with it. I just want to do the hops. Those things, they float and they go all weird. So here's our first hop addition. Just gonna dump it in there. Whoop. Return the lid, but it's on loose. So we shouldn't have any problems with weird weirdness, flavors and stuff. Um, and it's not an all grain beer, so I don't think there'll be any problem. I, I'm not, I won't put it on tight, but I'll, so I'll let it, you know, Bent, but I have to keep it on like that because otherwise it won't won't rolling. It won't go to a rolling boil. So, 1800 watts. That's all I've got. All right. So this has to go for 45 minutes. Alexa, set alarm for 45 minutes. She she confirmed it. She's way over there. Right. 45 minutes. Just I'll come over and keep an eye on it every once in a while. Um, after 45 minutes. The second hop edition gets added, okay? All this is down in the, you know, I'll provide you with all this information. And that's 15 minutes, at which point I'll get my wort chiller sanitized and ready. And then at flame out, we add the third hop edition. And then we cool the wort down and then we get it in the fermenter and top it up, add the yeast, done. Okay, all right. I'm enjoying this. This is nice. Mm, taking it easy. I got lots of stuff to do yet today, so I don't want to get, you know. Thirty, forty, no, forty-five minutes has passed. I went up and put a corned beef brisket on the stove for a boil for dinner. Um, okay. So that's sort of boiling. <laughs> we got our second hop edition. Two ounces of magnum and crystal, I think. I, I'll, again, I'll put the things down below, the exact measurements here. Just gonna fire them in there. 15 minutes, this has to. Alexa, set alarm for 15 minutes. Give it a little stir. I can barely keep a boil on this induction burner. I have to. Have, I would have to have a, a propane thing. And right now it's so cold outside. I wouldn't be doing this with the propane burner. Sorry. Especially filming it and everything. So this is going to have to do. And it's kind of part of the reason why I mostly do extract brews. Okay. Um, now what I'm going to do is I've got my wort chiller over here. I'm going to sanitize it. I'm not going to put it in here, that's what you normally would do to sanitize it, because it stops the boil and it screws up my hop schedule. So I'm going to spray it down with star sand and then I'm going to put it in at the last minute when it's time to chill the wort. Okay? I'll be back. Okay, I've taken it off the heat. We're ready, ready to chill it. There's lots of hop. Hop, uh, where'd that come from? Hops, uh, it's gonna be a lot of stuff at the bottom of the fermenter uh, when this is done. That's nothing I can do about that, but I'll have to clean the yeast and I can still reuse it. Um, this is the last hop edition. It's a uh, knockout hops, as they call them. Let's see, we got a, quite a mess here. What's from up there? Oh, it's, you know what it is? condensation from boiling stuff down here it's probably coming off that yep coming off the hot water hose alrighty now it's time to uh, chill the wort so I've got my wort chiller here and it's all sprayed sanitized I did a pretty thorough job at it so let's 
place it in, turn on the cold water, chill the wart. Um, make sure things don't... Well, I haven't actually used this wart chiller since I... for a while, actually. So I just don't want that thing to go snaking all over the place. Yes, and move it around a little bit. I'm trying to get this down to uh, reasonable, maybe 80 Fahrenheit, because then we're going to add cold water to top it up. So, now when I'm done this, which is only going to take, oops, it's only going to take uh, two, three, five minutes or something, like less than five minutes to cool this down. Um, sanitize my fermenter quickly, pour this in, top it up with cold water and add my yeast. That's it. But because I have, a, you know, a, not an ideal um, heating system over there, this takes a long time to bring things to a boil and get them up to temp. And every time you add something, it it stops the boil, and so it it's not an ideal situation, but it's good enough for what I do. Certainly, all grain down here would be a pain. You kind of have to have the right stuff. It's a known fact that if you move this around, it's much quicker. We're almost there. It's kind of... Whoops. Kind of heavy here. Um, this is not the ideal camera angle, I'm sorry. Uh, but this is where... I have to ferment. So, and there, we've avoided some of the, uh, not much, <laughs> some of the trube, trub, yeast, not yeast, hops. Uh, okay, I'm over here, you can't see me. But what I'm about to do is top this up with, uh, with water. And I'm going to try to keep the temperature relatively, you know, around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. 19 liters we're going to. Yeah, that's a little more than what they want, but that's where we're going. All right. A little less than what they want, actually. Sorry, I meant less, not more. Okay. I hope we're on here. Okay. Right. Give it a bit of a stir. Feels good. Feels good temperature. I have a. I bought a new toy, uh, which I will grab in a second. A new toy for temperatures. That's really, really cool. But we're just going to give it a stir so that the heat, you know, the temperatures are distributed. Nicely. And then I will grab that toy, excuse me. Okay. And according to this thing, well, it's a little warm, 77. But the yeast that I've been using is used to fermenting at a little higher temperatures. Um, this is a great thing um, for, for brewing and it's it really allows you to, to you know you can walk by your brew and just quickly I mean you can put these stickers on the side and whatnot but you can just walk by and go 76 so it's a little warm by most people's standards but my yeast who I've abused for almost two years now has no problem with that so without further ado I will grab said yeast and give it its new home. I don't measure this. It's it's a half a jar of liquid yeast. Put it in. There we are. I'm not a master brewer, folks. I, what I do works. It's this is not chemistry class. I'm, uh, you know, 
I'm doing what's worked for me for so long and the beer tastes good. Um, so this is the jar. So it was the yeast. There's about that much yeast in there. The yeast, the same yeast I've been using for almost two years now. Somebody said the other day that, um, you know, the reason why people don't want to use their yeast more than five times is because it changes the character of the yeast. So it's no longer, you know, whatever yeast it was when you started. It's no longer that. It's it's Craig tube yeast now, right? So it, it does what I need it to do. And if it gets a little warmer down here or the temperature's a little warm, it's fine. So there, I'm done. This is finished. Um, I've stirred it. The yeast is stirred in. I've got my lid over there. Let's see if we can get that over there. Just my lid. And I just have to put the water in here as well. Done. Sierra Nevada Extra IPA Torpedo Clone. Done. So there's only one more thing left to do with this is in a few days or about a week, um, I have to dry hop it. So that's what I'll do. And um, then I'll let it ferment out per the instructions and uh, we'll put it in a keg. We'll taste her again. This is the second one I've done. I'm excited. It's a really nice beer. All right. Anyways, that's me for now. Um, and uh, I'm going to go upstairs now and cook. Um, and uh, just have a beer. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. TGTshirts.com for t-shirts, please. And, uh, and, and, and lots, lots of people are buying them, but just keep it up. Um, um, you know, don't forget to put the like thing up there and subscribe and click the bell and all that stuff. You know how it works. And Friday nights live. Friday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live. Music, talk, Skype calls. It's radio. It's internet radio. And I'm your host. Let's give it a shot. All right? Be safe out there, guys and gals. Thanks for watching. Take care. See ya.